Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And in this episode, we are going to be taking a look at transportation, as are we in the next episode. And there's a good reason for that. On November 15th, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act was passed into law. So it's been said that the bill has a $1.2 trillion price tag, but it's really $550 billion when you consider that it's just reauthorization of a previous transportation bill which was originally signed back into law in 2015. That's the FAST Act. Uh, so much of this increased funding is dedicated to roads, something that has led the advocacy group Transportation for America deciding er, declaring that this was a historic investment in yesterday's transportation priorities. That said, there is a significant amount of infrastructure in the US that's in poor condition, and this bill aims to address that. So I'm going to point out a couple of things of interest to Verde Beach that are really going to drive some of the decision making here. So the bill includes $273 billion uh, for highways and roadway funding. That's a 32% increase over the previous authorization. It also includes $72 billion for the Surface Transportation Block Grant Program, uh, $7.2 billion of which uh, goes to the transportation alternatives program. So what that is, is it's a it's a transportation program administered at the local level through regional planning agencies. And that $7.2 trillion in the transportation alternatives program, that can go to bike and pet infrastructure and transit. Uh, so and that's locally selected, only competing with other local municipalities. Uh, and then there is a 172% increase in national strategic freight and the, uh, and the grant program associated with that, and $40 billion for new bridge investments. There's also a couple of interesting pilot programs that deal with roads too, uh, the first of which is, is, is a half billion dollars to reconnect communities, and the other is $350 million for wildlife crossings. So we are going to get some of that money, and uh, in this episode we're going to focus on the roadway money, and the next episode we're going to focus on the $70 billion that's been allocated to transit. Uh, so lots to think about in this one, and I'm going to tell you what we're going to do now. So if you look over here, we've got this highway. It comes through and it bisects the community right here. And what this ends up doing, when we take a look into our budget or in, into our land value, it creates a, a pretty stark division. And part of this is services. Part of this is being disconnected. So anywhere over here, it's going to take you longer to get anywhere else in Verde Beach. Uh, basically because this highway is here. So there's an opportunity with these programs to make some targeted connections. Uh, there's also an opportunity to take this, which if we take a look at our noise, it makes a lot of noise. We can we can get rid of all of this noise uh, of vehicles traveling through the community that don't actually go to the community. So we, we, can, we can remove this. And what I'm thinking is that we're going to apply and win grants in both the Reconnecting Communities program and then just the, the normal formula funds that we get through the Highway Trust Fund that I mentioned earlier. So what we're going to do is a couple of things. We're going to take the highway here and we're going to pull it straight across. We're going to connect up here and pull this highway straight up as well. And then we're going to take this local collector at this point, bring this around and have an inter uh, inter uh, a, a local uh a, a local junction there with the highway. So rather than having this weird service uh, junction connecting into a collector, we're going to actually have a, a, a better a better connection there to the highway network. And uh, I think it's going to flow a lot smoother. In fact, I'll switch over to our transportation. We still have, we have really good uh, traffic flow, but I think we can do even better. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove the, the highway straight through here and change the Bob Ross Memorial Interchange and, and decorate it for the first time. <laughs> so it's it's been uh, it's been pretty barren and we can take a look at that. There's nothing there. <laughs> so we're going to fix that and then we're going to reconnect and establish some connections between this area and the collector network. Get rid of these roundabouts, get rid of that roundabout and and create a really nice well-connected street grid here. One that doesn't funnel traffic into the neighborhood but establishes connections here so that we don't have problems like this. So the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use eminent domain on at least one house and establish some sort of connection over here to Lewis Garden City and 
bring our network back here because there's been a lot of development questions about this area. There's some pressures to build and uh, there's an opportunity to do so. So we're going to, we're going to do that. So without any further ado, we're going to do this without pausing the game. So we're going to need to be really thoughtful about how we go about this. So I know that I can disconnect this no problem. And that's where we're going to start. And I'll explain why in just a moment. So if I disconnect this, any traffic that wanted to go this way will just hop off and use this connection to get to this interchange right here. Not ideal, but it will do the trick. And now we're just going to pull this straight across. Before we do that, though, why don't we take a look at our grading? And it looks pretty darn good, but I think that we should just be... This is a highway. We're going to be really cautious. So we'll come over here. We'll just slope it straight up. Not enough soil. <laughs> our, our, our forever problem. That's okay though, because we're gonna look at this. We're about to open up a bunch of land here for development. I, I think there's no problem stealing some soil from here, making even more developable land for us in the future. I do need to be careful though, because the last thing I wanna do is go ahead and create a flooding problem. That is something else that's addressed in the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill or the Infrastructure and Jobs Act, whatever you want to call it these days. Uh, they There's a program for resiliency. I believe there's about $5 billion in there for resiliency. So maybe not as much as I'd, I'd like to see, considering it's a major problem facing basically every community in the US and most in the world at this point. So I'd love to see a whole bunch of money there. but. Uh, at some point, you got to just be happy that there's any money in there. It's not It's not that all of these issues are bipartisan issues. So um, I think that th I think it passed on something like a, an 89 vote uh, or 80. I think it was sorry, 69 to 30. Uh, so that's that's really impressive in today's Congress. So maybe that's a low bar, but it, it is what it is. And I will veer away from politics now <laughs> because you don't get me started. So anyway, we will bring this over here and I could just build this from either side, but it's going to be a lot cleaner for me to try to line up with my junctions here and then reverse the road. So i got a nice connection here. It's completely level, perfectly straight. Look at that. Looking good. My highway. Oh, no, I spent so much time trying to make this not happen. Okay, well, little mulligan, we'll redo this a bit. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that looks bad. No wonder why it looks the way it did, or it looked the way it did. The soil issues will be the death of me. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna go a bit further, I think. We're gonna take some back here. I know that we need this soil taken away anyway. We're gonna do something back here at some point. And when we do, we can't have a collector road just going into a hill. That's not gonna work. So I'll steal it from deck back there. We'll drive it down this road, Baja, down here, and uh, make some interesting roadway connections. It'll be perfect. Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. It's so close. All right, well, back to the drawing board. Take a little bit more, refill the palette. There we go. And then we'll come back down here. We'll give it one more go. It's got to work this time, right? There we go. So now we can go from either side too, and this should be absolutely beautiful. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Outside connection needed. Okay. <laughs> so elephant in the room. This probably looks a lot better than the last one. I've, I've made some settings changes. Uh, I've rebuilt my computer, I've reinstalled Windows, and I've done a whole bunch of other stuff that has made this game run like like it hasn't before. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm running at 4K, and just a little look under the hood, getting 61 frames when I'm looking that way. This way, getting 46, 41. I'm really happy. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take my win there and, and, and be very happy. Now, here there would be some sort of bypass and we're gonna do real dirty. It's gonna be terrible. Uh, so there would likely be some lane switching and some crazy stuff. We'll just have some sort of local road diverter. <laughs> no, no, we'll just, we're just gonna go fast. 
That's the best policy. We'll just close the highway. Uh, which would almost never happen, but we're gonna we're gonna take some liberties. I wasn't sure that I was gonna be able to hit that. But no problem. Look at that. So now we're just sending this right over there, and that is exactly what I hoped. So now I've got to make some changes here, and I can do this one live as well because people can still get off here. So we're gonna close this down now. And what I want to do is send this right up to here. And then we're going to make some changes and we're going to use some local, uh, some dirt roads rather, to actually build our interchange. So this is going to be a challenging one uh, because of the angles that we're coming in at. But that's okay. We're up to the task. So we just need to look at our movements. And we know that there are really, there's really just a couple of movements we need to make. So we need to get vehicles from right here onto this road going this way and that way, this way and this way. And if we can make those three movements, we are good to go. So what I'm gonna do to start out with, I'm gonna pull this up, let's go up 100. And I'll pull that over one, one, there we go. So you might wonder why I'm doing that. The primary reason is that, so I have these nodes there. We're gonna now be able to split this off a bit. Maybe I didn't go far enough. Okay, so you're gonna have to become a master to do this at uh, actually separating out or at sw switching your snap twos on the fly because we're gonna have to do that to make this work. So I'm gonna focus on this road going towards the highways right now. And I'm gonna turn my road guidelines back on. We're gonna create a mirroring road. And now that perfectly lines up. Now this road here is gonna come up and then we're gonna turn it around. So I'm gonna go over 12. I'm gonna use really fine movements if I can. And then I actually need to start sending this over beforehand. So I was able to drop that down one here. So I'm gonna go for it. And now I'm gonna mirror this a little bit more because I think I'm gonna to need to take some of this back. Now to finish off, I'm gonna use my curved road tool, line up with that line there, make the connection. Uh, not perfect, but pretty darn good. Uh, I could have probably dropped it sooner and go on ground level. Might give that a shot. There we go. So that's a little bit better. I like that. And then the other thing, we're going to do the exact same thing over here. So we're going to mirror that road and we'll use that to make our connection. Using our curved road tool. There we go. Now we can separate these and I'm going to start upgrading these right off the bat. And the main reason I'm doing that is you can run into some real problems crossing the highways look at that look at that we've got one of them one of the legs done beautiful so one of our movements is taken care of so over here we need to do the exact same thing but this time oh actually our movements backwards right there <laughs> so we'll make that one fix uh, and then over here let's do the exact same thing I'm just gonna mirror now, we might actually need to pull this highway back. Now that I'm looking, our angle's inappropriate. See if I can make this work without it. So what I'm gonna do is pick my angle. I'm gonna go at 45 or thereabouts, as close as I can get, and I'll just pull that back down. Now, this, this is the primary reason why I'm concerned. We need to, to go over this, and I don't know that we can right now. So over or under were the two options. We're not going under, that's a little bit hokey. Uh, so we'll try going up, but I don't think we're going to be able to get over. So that was seven clicks up. That wasn't enough. And truthfully, this is very steep. So I think we're going to back it out to right about there. And then we'll start going up. And I'll do three here and three here. And I'll do one more right there. And here's where it gets tricky. So. We're, we're clearing this. You can see because it's not turning red. That's fine. The problem is my ramp. So I'm going to see if using a normal road will give me a better pillar. There we go. That's perfect. And then we'll need to mirror that connection over here. Drop that all the way down. And this is going to need to be a, a longer ramp so that we can actually... Uh, 
climb down, so to speak. So from there, let's pull this back down. And truthfully, we could have started our descent right there. So we're going to try that. And then I just use the road, curve road tool to, to finish that off. Now we got one ugly bump right here, but I'm not overly concerned about it because we can go in reverse and get this fixed. So what I'll do is I'll just come down here. We're going to turn off our road guidelines and just follow our longest bridge. Drop it down three. One, two, three. There we go. So we're going to need to do some things here to make this right. So first of all, we'll start out. I really dislike strongly that this is bending now. That's okay. We'll just get our perfect 45. And we'll pull that back around. This is a really inefficient use of the land. But most interchanges are, unfortunately. If you, if you look at the footprint of interchanges, they are absolutely massive. So even though I would love to get this tighter, there is a way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at it. I could have come up from the other side and pulled this back through. So that might be the approach. Let's give that a shot. So we'll do something spicy for just a minute. So I will turn that off. Doesn't like it. Does not like it a bit. We're going to keep trying. So we'll throw a road grid line, or guideline right there. Now. There we go. And that will allow me to, at this point, make add a node where I want it to be. Delete this. Now those line up. And now we can make our connection. There we go. That is significantly better. And that will allow us to at least tighten this up just a little bit. Had to get creative with our nodes, but, you know, yeah, creativity pays. <laughs> so, so be creative. I, I highly encourage it. So I don't know where I'm going to be able to sneak under. Look at that. That is beautiful. Beautiful. And I can really shorten up that ramp length if I want. I'm not going to just for visual continuity. Uh, but I could. And then I'll connect up at that node. So now it'll be nice and balanced. I wish this weren't so high. But it, it, it kind of just needs to be. So we're going to go with it. Let's start upgrading and getting this thing running. All right. And then this one as well. So I could try to take this bridge and come in here. I might give that a shot. So let's get this upgraded. And then I'll, I'll try to loop it back around so we have the same length. Totally unnecessary, but it will look much nicer if we do that. So what I'll do, I'm going to go through here and I'm going to draw in a line right here. And that will help me know where to connect the bridge. And then I'm going to use my curved road tool. It is going to be tricky, so I'm going to need to go a bit further back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send this down just a hair and then connect it up in reverse. So that gives me a nice smooth ramp. Look at this. We've done it. We have done it. One down. Oh, that is that is nice. You know, we could we could oh no, it's not. <laughs> you get to hop on your dirt road segment. And <laughs> experience life as it used to be. Alright, so that's this is nice. So I can come through. We could certainly go through and uh, you know, if we wanted to, you know do a little bit of that but I think it looks better without that so until I see it functioning poorly I'm gonna leave it because I like the way it looks and it's gonna function well in my uh, in my estimation so that's one down I got a little water problem here Ooh, who did that that is that is unacceptable and the, the real question is why would these people live here for all those years without water pipes underneath the road all right, that's much better. So, <laughs> whoa, there we go. So we're gonna disconnect this and we need to find a path for this. Now, what I'm thinking is we're gonna look at our terrain and find out that it's basically flat. So at that point, we just need a good place where maybe we could make a junction. So it doesn't necessarily need to be right here. 
and this is really not an ideal spot. Uh, we're going to really have a, a strong impact on the uh, overall functionality of this junction if we were to make our connection right there. So we're going to send a bridge over this and then terminate it over here. And if we take a look, there's not a lot we can do here. So it's probably going to be uh, some sort of um, probably a trumpet. So lots going on today. <laughs> so we're going to send that through here. And what we're going to do is run this. First of all, we have to reorient it here. So we'll start here, send it right down. And let's find our bridge location. And I think it's going to be right here. Go up three. And then we'll come down. And that's way too long. We're not going to do that. So let's minimize our bridge span. It's always a good kind of rule. And then, since we have a little bit of soil, we're going to raise this up. And then we'll even it out. Lower it down just a notch. Bring that up on both sides. And now we'll use our slope terrain tool and create a nice slope for ourselves. Or not. <laughs> Whatever works. All right. So now we should be able to bring this back down to the ground. Oh, look at that. So sometimes it won't work for you. And this is one of those like, oh, mods <laughs> sorts of situations. Because this is a very simple solution with mods. Not always simple, but we can make it work. Not always simple in vanilla. But there we go. And now we can make our connection. And basically what we're going to do is, why don't we just send this straight? We will break that road connection there. And I shouldn't have, I extended this way too soon, spending lots of money on mistakes. Never a good idea. <laughs> but, but that's where we're at. I'm going to downgrade that as well, just for continuity. And then we'll make our local roadway connections here. We are going to straighten this out. There's no reason on a brand new road to have that kind of, kind of angle. So we're not going to do it. And then we'll use our curved road tool to line these up. Sometimes you got to grab it from the other side. Now over here, it's going to be trickier. So I don't want to demolish these homes. So we're just going to parallel the road a bit. And then we'll use our curved road tool to come right in. Now we don't have any new junctions, which is the main goal there. So that is nice. And now we just need to find a way to connect up over here with our collector. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going, to, I'm going to try to not develop too close to the shore. And I assume there'd be a setback there anyway. Um, so why don't, we, why don't we leave about three tiles worth of space? And the uses here, I have ideas. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about them yet, but I've got some ideas. But for the time being undetermined, we'll leave it there. And now we at least have a nice connection over here. And this opens up so much land for development and it's well connected. Um, and there will be an interchange over here, which is going to be a great help and benefit to the city. So what we're going to do is start out by building in a trumpet. So let's get the bones of our trumpet in place. So I, I do want to build some of those ramps right off the bat. So I'm going to use my freeform tool and just try to mirror this. And we'll have one over here as well. These are probably way too long, but I'm not overly concerned about that right now. I just really want to make sure that I have uh, some guidelines in place for myself. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do is build our road going across here. So I believe this is fairly flat. And that, that, that's why this is an ideal location. We'll come over here. We'll pop it up three. Now we're going to need to back this off some. Uh, this is another location candidate for uh, cut and fill. But we're going to need to do that after the fact. So now that we have this here, we're going to want to break this off. So we're going to want one that loops back around and the other one that loops this way. So we're going to use our dirt roads for this. Let me give that a bit of thought for a second. It might make sense to come back with this. And we'll just maximize that length there. And then we will switch over to 
using our dirt roads like we have been. And we'll come up, we'll make one connection up here, then we will use our guidelines. We're gonna go a bit beyond. Well, that's not gonna do what I was hoping. Actually, I, it might have. And then here, we're gonna use our free form. And we need to make another mirrored road here. And it's, it's giving me all of the wrong guidelines. And that's because there are so many of them right here. So sometimes when you have that issue, it can be easier just to make a, make a connection and actually get rid of the road guidelines, go with just grid, get the, the length that you need, and then just make it. So the problem that we're gonna have is there's a, oh, bummer. So this pillar is way too close. I needed this to go further. So we're gonna need to back that up. We'll go beyond. Make sure that our road can run underneath it. Then we can extend this out a bit and hopefully make a nice circle here. There we go. So we've got one last movement that we really need to get cleaned up and that is right here at the junction. So we're gonna take that down. I'm gonna need to turn off road guidelines. We'll take that down as far as we can. Try to make that look well lined up. And then from that point, make our dirt road connections. So these don't always function great in vanilla. So we're gonna have to kind of play around a little bit just to make sure that we're that it's working. But I have faith, I have faith. So that's looking good there. So this will be where you get on. So let's go ahead and upgrade that. And we'll start with one and we'll upgrade it to two for the lanes. Distance too short. <laughs> it doesn't like that little little segment right there. Let's see if we can make it work. And we're gonna have to just completely freeform this part. And then we'll go back to our road guidelines, angle and road guidelines, find that and make our connection. And over here, we're probably gonna run into the exact same problem. Ooh, different problem. So that's just too close. So we'll come through and just start making our upgrades. So I'm going through here and just carefully making these. I wish I could get this closer. I might try it. It's probably not smart. <laughs> it's certainly letting perfect be the enemy of good because this is pretty darn good. It's gonna function well. But I love it if it were just a little bit better. Yep, I've definitely made that worse. Significantly worse. <laughs> So that is why you just you let you let good enough be good enough. This is this is what I'm known for. I just I can't help myself and look where it gets me. So we're gonna give it another go. We're gonna eyeball it and hopefully I can fix it. <laughs> yeah, it just, I hate the way it pops up. The only way to fix that I think is to actually change the angle that this is coming in at. It, that's a, a whole lot of picky. I might do that off camera at some point, uh, but I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to just let it go. Just let it go. I probably should let this go in the right direction too. So there we go. That side's done. This other side is considerably easier. This is simply coming in at the right angle. So I wanna come in at a 45 if I can. That's simple. Same thing over here, 45. I just want to make sure I have the same length. So it was 500 before, so 545. And then we'll come over here and we will use our curved row tool. Line up with the right junction and there we go. And we'll do the same thing over here. I would love to make this line up exactly where this other one did. So we're just going to, we're going to do that. It'll be simple enough. We'll grab our dirt road, come through here, line up with this. And we'll come back just a bit. Now, you're going to see why I did that in a minute. That's going to be our, our length where we're able to turn in. So we'll curve at that point and just move right there. So that should be fine. This shouldn't back up here, so I'm not going to be overly concerned about it. So let's make our enhancements, reverse that, and this, and that. There we go. So it's not perfect. It's it's actually pretty ugly, <laughs> but it's gonna be functional. I'm curious, how much worse is that than this? Yeah, it's a lot worse. <laughs> Maybe 
it's not. Maybe it's fine. Yeah, move it would really help with this, because I could pull this down a little bit. I'm going to think about this a bit more, but for the time being, it's going to do the trick. Also going to go through here and manually handle some of these traffic controls. There's no need to have all of these signals. Really, it's just this one. And I bet you if I just leave it off, it'll be just fine. So that said, that 45 is not working well. Let's give this one more go. Because the last thing we want is for traffic to be turning around. So I'm curious. 45 is still giving me that. So it's just one of those unfortunate, the more I, I angle this. So 45 is basically where it, it stops before it makes me start bending. So I don't want that to happen. So we're just going to let it be. Either way, we're not developing this area today. This is infrastructure that we are lucky is getting built as a part of this bill. So there we go. We'll let this go. I, I don't even know that we're going to see much traffic on here for the time being. Oh, look at that. We're seeing some freight traffic. Very good. We'll take it. So we probably could have had some sort of complicated junction here to try to make this work. It's just going to be a lot cleaner to send it this way. So now we've got more work to do. So we've got the Bob Ross Memorial Interchange. We don't need that anymore. Let's start taking this back. So we are going to sever this connection for the time being. And that is going to do some things to our traffic. Look at, look at these guys are happy because we're taking this down. That's all that noise and pollution that they've been suffering with for years. And now we're reconnecting the community. Absolutely fantastic. So I'm wondering if there's an inexpensive solution here. So the inexpensive solution would be using some of our old structure. So we've got this. So really we're, we need to facilitate two movements. So if we could facilitate entering this and exiting, we would be fine. It's an, it's not the prettiest interchange. We're going to need to do something to it. Uh, but I think that that's totally within the realm of possibility. Let's just take that back and we'll go through and see if it's possible to just do something fairly simple. So first of all, let's again mirror this. We'll find our ramp location. And we're going to need one to go up and over and the other one to go underneath. So if I could send this one here and start dropping it down quickly enough. Oh, so I inadvertently sent that down. So it, it, it really is not going to like me using my dirt roads here. My favorite trick. So as a result, we're going to need to try something else. And we'll just need to back it up until it likes it. That is not lovely. So what we're going to do, I think we're going to send it straight and start dropping it down as, as best we can. We're going to turn off grid. It's not being helpful right now. We're going to turn off road guidelines. And I'm, I want to focus on this ramp location. There we go. So that's really our primary concern at this point. And our secondary concern will be making sure that this ramp is as low as it can be. There we go. That's actually pretty nice. So I'm not going to worry about this. We're going to focus on just making nice, clean connections right here. We will continue what we've been doing. But on this side, we're going to do the exact opposite. So we'll come over here. We'll meet there. and We'll, we'll pop this up three or maybe two. And then we'll make our curve. All I got to do is pop it up one. That is wonderful. And then we'll need to descend. We're going to need to do it over a longer period of time. So there's three. And we're going to need to actually do this before we reach our rail infrastructure. So this is going to be a steeper ramp. That's okay. We can live with one if it makes sense and there's a purpose. There we go. And over here, what I think we're going to do is just try to line this up again with this interchange right here. And it doesn't like it with this ramp up across the way doesn't like it but we're gonna force it to there we go we've we've forced the issue and now it works so let's get everything lined up appropriately oh don't do this to me don't do this to me no <laughs> so it doesn't like this 
it wants this to be a little bit higher and that's a really steep drop that really stinks if anything i'd like to, i'd like it to be lower let's i'm going to try one thing that one thing will be just rebuilding sometimes that's good enough it is not in this case oh interesting so it just doesn't like this at all so i thought it was just i thought it was special <laughs> i thought that it was a uh, that for some reason it just uh, for some reason I thought that it was just this one particular location but it just doesn't like anything I'm doing right here so that's okay we'll we'll, uh, we'll make it happen so we were able to do it there with our dirt road so let's upgrade this oh really 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 wow so this ramp isn't high enough that's so it, it, with with these sorts of things it's it's kind of process of elimination that's all that i can figure out that it would be two options there and i think i'm going to take the easy solution we're going to pop this down you see that there is elevation there that is interesting so there must have been some sort of elevation there in the past we somehow were able to build over it the game remembered and it was mad so hopefully this resolves the issue does yes it does there we go and then we just reverse this i didn't even do much there i just leveled out the land that was there before now let's just hope yeah <laughs> uh, yeah no, nothing's gonna be easy so this it wants to be higher which is basically everything my nightmares are made out of so we're going to give it a go Wow, that was significantly higher. So at that, if we're gonna make that work, we actually might need to go over the rail, which was not at all what I was thinking was gonna happen. We can we can make that work. So we'll turn on our road length, because if we go and we try to be reasonable with this, it's just not gonna like it. So the option, that, so there's a couple of options. We could just raise the rail. Uh, that would never happen in reality. So what I'm gonna do, We've got a we've got billions of dollars of highway funding. We're using them. So that is horrendous. And that would never happen in a million years. Oh boy, that is terrible. So the most cost effective way of handling this would clearly be the rail. And we're gonna pay the rail company for the privilege of moving their bridge. They'll get some improvements. As we recall, that is a significant component of the infrastructure plan. Uh, there was billions allocated for freight, so it's not out of the realm of possibility that freight would be improved. Oh boy, I really dislike everything I just did. But I think, with the exception of the trains disappearing, we're in a better place with this. So I, I have to raise up the north side to make it work then the south side doesn't need to be raised up for just just for visual continuity we're gonna keep them at the same height I think it'll also make it easier as we are making our connections because we're gonna have to rebuild these it seems like they're close but just a little off that I'm just gonna just gonna just gonna stop just gonna stop <laughs> and then from here we'll bring that angle around and this is the angle that we're gonna make our connection at. So we don't have to rebuild much in the way of infrastructure. And then we've got a nice clean connection there and we'll make this connection under the bridge. <laughs> Which immediately makes that train break, load back to where it was and apparently do whatever this is. Stop and think for a while. <laughs> and if you can make it past, there we go. <laughs> Apparently that's fine. <laughs> Apparently that is totally all right. Uh, and I, I can't get rid of this. It's just gonna have to despawn. So that's it's fine. That's it's it's gonna work just okay. Just just all just wonderfully. <laughs> so these roundabouts, I've hated these for a long time, and now they're gone. Now you might wonder why am I why am I preserving that bridge? I've got a very specific purpose for that, and that is we're gonna have a local expressway through here. And that expressway is going to do a lot for the city. This stinks. It's just a little bit off. 
so there's a slight bend there. It, it'll be fine. It just not ideal. So we're going to run an expressway along here and we're going to go up and above this and make a connection over here into this collector, which will serve as kind of a bypass, get goods around the city. And I think it's going to be a really important connection in the future. Let's take a look though. We've made some significant changes. What happened to our transportation network? It's the same. <laughs> Surprise, a billion dollars, and oh, I guess our ramps are wrong, so that won't help much. There we go. And let's make a couple of improvements here. We should finish this and make some changes. So we'll drop this down to two lanes, to there. That'll be fine. So it doesn't really need two lanes here. In fact, it probably should drop and we should be prioritizing this. Lane mathematics are all off. I'm sorry, Biffa, I tried. <laughs> I, I, I could do better, maybe I will. But I think for the time being, this will do the trick. Uh, let's, let's focus on our other road and our roadway connectivity, which is really the next concern that we have here. So I wanna mirror some of the things that we've been doing. I'm gonna use a local road uh, in the place of this highway that we are gonna place. We'll back that about a tile off from our previous bridges. And then I'm going to use the mirroring of roads. Just get these lined up. And here's where we can freestyle a bit. So we are going to try to keep this close. We don't want this to, we don't want to waste any land here. That That's what was the case. We'll have to take out this ped bridge. We'll replace that. And then here, we're gonna send this right underneath. And that'll be a local connection. We're gonna need to make a connection to this collector too, but for the time being, that'll do the trick. And then we'll come through here as well. And now here we're gonna turn off everything but angle because it'll be really hard to make a good junction otherwise. So we'll turn that, then we'll turn on our road guidelines and our curved road tool, bring this up. Look at that, beautiful connection, follows this well. And now we just need a nice connection over here into our collector. So here's another spot where we'll use our freeform tool. We'll come in at our angle. So we're coming in at a perfect 90. Now I'm gonna turn on the road guideline so I line up with the train. And then I'll use my curved road tool and make a nice connection. Let's get this upgraded. This is gonna become a very popular route. I can tell you that right off the bat. I can also tell you that it doesn't like this. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. So we've got that made there. Then we will bring this over, loop around. So that is very steep. I'd love to be able to extend this up a bit. It's just not gonna work. And now we're gonna pull this all the way back. Now this expressway connection will need to go somewhere and we're gonna send it somewhere, but we're not there just yet. Where we are at is needing a connection between this massive viaduct and our new roadway connection. So we're gonna do that right now. And for this, I would absolutely love for this to be a ground level connection. This should have never been a bridge like this. We're gonna try something. So what we're gonna do, we'll just come through here and I'm gonna raise this up. And then I'm gonna try to upgrade this. Let's try a bike road. Well, I got a ramp. <laughs> so I've got that going for me. Uh, not exactly what I was hoping. I didn't go high enough, I think. So I will try that one more time. Okay, so to me going through and making that change is hugely significant for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I probably should have upgraded this first. So we're calling a mulligan. I'm gonna steal some soil over here. And then we'll go and raise this up again. So that was a mistake. Uh, the reason why that happened is simply that I uh, lowered the ground first. And now the ground is lower underneath there. Do the power of YouTube, we're gonna fix this. We'll just get that fixed right now. 
Okay. <laughs> so there we go. We, we're not going to have bike lanes right here necessarily, but that'll that'll do the trick. Over here, the ramp is much better. I could probably get one more length converted. We're going to give it a go. There we go. That's the stuff. Oh, wow, that's like a move it issue. I'm going to just, uh, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll call them all and go right back to where that was and call it a day. So if we wanted that to, to work, we'd need to move this out a little bit. Then we're just going to let it be. So now we've got some movement here. We've built a lot of roadway infrastructure. Let's take a look. I want to look at the traffic again. 82. Not great. Not great. Not terrible. But not great. But some of that's going to be fixed when we resolve our last bit of issue here, and that is this area. So what I want to do, we're going to pull this road through. We're going to use some eminent domain on one of those commercial buildings. Let's back this road up a bit. We're going to send a local road through here. So what we're going to do is pull this up and send this right back. And then we'll make a local roadway connection here. So this is very lumpy and bumpy, and I don't love it, but... I don't hate it either. What we're gonna do is send this into this road at a 90. There we go. And we could certainly do more for local connectivity. This bridge is now no longer necessary. So I think we're gonna formalize that. We're gonna drop this down. So why don't we just clear a bit of that. Now that we have this, we can just add it at the ground level. So we'll maintain that. Truthfully, I don't even know why I did that. Uh, it's not entirely necessary that that occurs. And we're going to need to upgrade some of these roads to the dirt road, or the, uh, or the, the uh, industry road, but it'll be okay for the time being. So we'll make our connection there, pull this up, and we're going to do a couple of things. So let's just pull this through. We'll make our connection there, disband this, and then pull this right over here and we'll have a few connections so we're making a lot of local connections giving vehicles options trying to prevent all that funneling that was occurring and there's still some but look at the amount of local connectivity we have here now even this one we could add this in if we wanted to not hugely important we're going to start running again because there's no reason not to and we're going to send this highway back and this is going to be one of the critical connections. So I want to make this local roadway connection back here. There we go. So that's where the highway will end up. And let's go through and change some of our roads, the industry roads back here. No reason not to. They will save us money over time because concrete has a longer lifespan, even though it's louder. So over here, it's going to be a problem. So we'll leave it. And that reminds me. I left something over here. Whoops. <laughs> so here we go. And to me, this is a network that is dramatically more complete. We're still seeing some, some very challenging circumstances over here. So let's go ahead and make a fix. So what I would love to do over here is actually have a park low. That's not going to happen. The game's just not sophisticated enough to allow that. So we can go ahead and just add a ramp connection here. And I'm gonna change this so that over here we're blocking that off. So that's a stop sign there, free flow through here. And then we need to adjust some of our signals because we have a lot of new signals that are not warranted. This one's probably okay. This is kind of the end of the city. Not entirely sure that that's needed though, so we'll get rid of that even too. And then let's just go through and make sure we don't have any signals that we don't need. We've got this one, got that one, that one makes sense. These are going in, it's local roads teeing into collectors. We have these collectors teeing into collectors, they get a signal. And some of this is gonna clear up naturally on its own. So the path that I'm hoping that these vehicles will take is to hop off here, come through here. So why don't we even prioritize some of these movements through here? And we will signalize it here. There we go. So I want to speed this up to let some of this clear out. You see that it already has to a certain extent. 
This might even be suitable as a stop sign. Technically, this would be an arterial uh, right here. And it's really one of, one of our few arterials going this way. But you see that there's a lot of traffic already on it. In fact, if we click on it, look at the utilization of that road. That is wild. Definitely necessary to have that. They're going all over the place. They're going on the highway the, to, to enter the rest of Verde Beach. They are leaving the city. They're coming over here. Lots of things, lots of movements occurring. And now that we have that worked out, let's take a look at our traffic. Improved a little bit. There's potentially too much connectivity. I wonder if this is a beneficial road or not. Because when we take a look at this, wow, that's the dominant movement. So truthfully, this should probably be angling this way. Now this would all be modeled out. And before we're just guessing and checking, <laughs> there would be some rationale for this decision-making process. But because we don't have the luxury of modeling except for in real time in the game, we are going to t do it in real time in the game. Now I will just send that angle that way. So I could get really cheeky with it and try something like this. Truthfully, I don't think that's helping anyone, but we can give it a shot. It might actually help the traffic flow a little bit because there really are two dominant movements. I'm wondering where this heads now. That actually might be a, an okay solution for this area because it, we are. this is really a freight corridor. And you can tell that when you look at it, there's all the brown. There's some purple, that, that's the uh, private vehicles. And then there is the public transport, uh, transport and cargo, that's the pink. But really most of it's the brown and that's the freight movement. So I'm happy to see the freight movement being contained to this road. But, you know, there are some realities of that that we're going to deal with. Let's go ahead. We're going to add in this connection as well. There we go. Now, this did something really neat. Look at how much space it opened up to expand this park. So I don't think that we're going to blast a road through here and make this connection. We certainly could. Not through the park, though. I think that we're going to do it outside of there. We have this connection here. We could use a bit of eminent domain and make a connection here. I think that's probably the more likely scenario. Truthfully, eminent domain is difficult in general. The most likely scenario is probably a road coming off here, big cul-de-sac, maybe a pedestrian connection through there. Everything else is, is very challenging. Uh, but we can take some liberties. It's a, it's a game. So that could be what we do. For the time being, I think I'm, I'm liking where that is. Let's take a look at our traffic flow. We've dropped. <laughs> so that's, that's where getting hokey gets us. It gets us with worse traffic than we had before. And we've got some interesting things happening here. And I think part of that is we've taken this local route here to the freight network. And we're really incentivizing these freight vehicles going up here. In fact, I think that if we were to look at this bridge, ooh. <laughs> Maybe not like that. Maybe not like that. There we go. Uh, so if we were to take a look at this bridge, yeah, there's a heavy freight movement deciding to make this. Yeah, that is not good. So as much as I want that connectivity, that was not a movement I wanted to incentivize. So that is problematic for me. And we're going to probably need to do something about that. Something to make that less desirable. So I'm wondering if a bunch of stop signs would do the trick. Got a signal here coming out of the bus depot. That one makes sense to me. Signal here. This is not a not a great route. So hopefully that does nothing. It's because it's it's so much more convenient than coming around this way. But I could make this more convenient. And the way that I could do that is there's an opportunity to pull a road back here that'll open up more developable land, which at this point, that's kind of what we're doing. We're maximizing our density, but for this earthquake sensor, which was being used to jump power at one point. So we've got another thing going on. There's kind of a weird node there. So I'm gonna get rid of that node and force a slightly more logical connection. And then we will come through here and make this road connection. These junctions are way too close. 
So we're gonna, again, I'm kind of testing some things out here and trying to find the best configuration that I can. Uh, this is, again, one of those things, I don't love doing this, but at the same time, we're making some significant in infrastructure investments. If there ever is a time to test, this is the time. There we go. So I think that's probably a more logical connectivity pattern. And then we need to look at our junctions because they're all crazy at this point. If we prioritize these movements through here. I'm hopeful that we will get some of this freight traffic heading this way. Look at that, still going in the wrong place. And that might resolve itself over time, but it's still, this, is, this road is so much faster. That's my major issue. So short of reversing this or severing this connection, which I really like, nothing's gonna happen. So I do think we're gonna call a mulligan on that connection. I love the connectivity, but I don't love it that much. It kind of makes me sad though, <laughs> which is silly to say, but it does. I, I love connectivity so much. I think it's so important. We are gonna maintain something. So we have a pedestrian connection there. That's better than nothing. This is probably one of those things that in the future people say, I just wish they'd put that road right there. And the city is constantly saying, we would love to too, but we can't. And the consequence of that change is gonna be very apparent. Let's go in here. All that traffic is now going this way. So, and then we, we've separated the lines. So now we have pinks and the purple going up this way and the orange brown going this way. And that was, that was what I wanted. That's going to improve our traffic flow, which it has. This is still bad and boy, this is a lot busier than I thought it was gonna be. So I'm going to just unsignalize some of these local roads, so, or remove the stop signs. With these in particular, it can, the game can struggle with it. No way would any of these be un, uncontrolled, but the game likes it, so we're gonna, we're gonna like it <laughs> because we have to. Uh, and then we're gonna also add some more pedestrian connectivity over here. So we could start to develop some of this land if we wanted to. There's plenty of, of connections that could be made. The other thing we could do is add more connectivity here if we wanted. This is a really short distance here, but you can see a lot of these have cleared up because of this road being placed here. Unfortunately, we have an absolute disaster mess situation right here. There's so much desire for this connection. We have buses going down there. They're using it as a short path. We are backed up way back here. We have a loading occurring all over the place. So I might have created an issue. This is induced demand at its finest. <laughs> so, uh, where, whereas before this was a difficult path to make, now it's very easy and there are many vehicles taking that path. Because it's such a dominant movement, I'm gonna turn on signalized uh, and see what happens here. See if this clears up a bit. The other thing I'm thinking of doing is using our asymmetrical roads here. So this will allow us to reverse it part way through, give a place to have left and right turn lanes. And I'm gonna add those in both directions here, I think. So this is some, some straight up vanilla traffic management. Oh, and I did that. <laughs> So this gives a little bit of queuing distance. It's not great. I wish that I could move this down. I probably could, but it might break this. So we'll leave it. It seems like that resolved some of the issues here. So we're allowing this through movement to occur. We're allowing someone to take a left. We have a left and a right lane here, same here. And that makes me wonder if this signal is even necessary anymore. Might be able to get away with the stop sign. We'll give it a go. And if we look, we're at 83, and I'm curious. I'll add that junction back in there because it, it was clearing, at least, with that signal there. We come in here, we see that it's red, it's bad, but it, it actually improves traffic to put that signal there to allow this to, to clear. And then you get this whole queue here that can load up here and wait in their spot. So this is, it's ugly but it's functioning. And the queue distance is 
they're long, but they're not insurmountable, which is where they were before. So I think we're going to accept a little bit of ugliness there. Over, over in this area, we're totally fine. The bigger concern is probably over here. We want to make sure that we have our junctions controlled appropriately. We have a stop sign. Here we have a signal. I don't know that that one's warranted. This one, on the other hand, might be a bit better of a candidate for that. This probably should be signalized. I'm going to let it go for a second to see what happens. So there would be warrants and you know a whole measure associated with this. And you know I don't have those uh, that that data available to me in this game. What I do see is that we have some significant demand to turn here, and I think that it's strong enough that we will go through and add a signal. In both of these, these would likely be timed together. But that's not going to happen in vanilla. So because of that, I'm going to upgrade this little segment here to a three-lane road. So we have a little bit more queuing distance. We can have that priori priority right there and then have people get around. So this is purely focused on uh, the lane mathematics in this particular area. So that should be beneficial there. When we're taking a look, we can see that some of the vehicles are going to pop over here. Some are going to hop in that turn lane. And they're not going to clog things up. Yeah, that, that cleared things up right there. So it's a lot of little vanilla traffic fixes. So still at about 83, and that's probably where we're going to get stuck, 84, until we do some more with transit, which is our next episode. We've also, I'm seeing the train network do some things that I'm very uncomfortable with. You see it just backing up. So we're becoming more dependent on our train network now that we've taken that highway away. And that's going to be part of the part of the thing we need to contend with over time. But for the time being, I think we're going to, we need to take a look at this and do a little bit of decorating here. But first, why don't we have a quick city tour? Okay, and I, you know, I've got to end this. We've done a lot of building, a lot of building. But we've been, we haven't done anything for decorating. So we need to do a little bit here. I'm going to keep it pretty basic. We're just going to use trees and bushes to decorate this and try to give Bob Ross something that he could be proud of. Okay, that's looking so much better. I'm really excited about how this turned out. I didn't use any palm trees because I'd never seen Bob Ross paint a palm tree. So uh, hopefully this is a little bit better. Feels a little bit more Bob Rossy. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, why don't we take a look at what we've done because I think that this has been a very important build. So we have minimized our transportation corridor in here, added some more connection to the local roadway network. We've improved some things over here with the roadway layout in our industrial area, providing some local connections. We've completely rebuilt our highway over here, building this, this, this new system interchange. It uh, provides quick movement between the three legs of the highway. We built a little ugly trumpet over here and uh, <laughs> we were letting it do its thing. We've uh, built an area where we can now expand and do a lot. So I'm really excited about that. We have rebuilt this bridge a couple of times because I keep breaking it. 
And uh, now things appear to be good. Let's look at where our traffic sits now that things have run a bit. 84, we're still there. We'll, we're still there. Some of this is uh, due to traffic. Oh, 85, there we go. We're now, we're now we're in business, I'm feeling good. I wanna get us up to 90. I don't know if I can, but we're gonna go for it. That is our goal and uh, we're gonna try. So I think we're gonna leave it here though. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.